Good afternoon from Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale-by-the-Sea. What a great day we've had, and I hope you had a wonderful weekend as well, as I did too, uh, looking in anticipation of seeing what's happening in the markets today after Friday and last week's craziness in precious metals markets. Everything being up across the board, uh, blowing through that $29 market too, or almost $29 on uh, silver. Uh, let's take a look, and I guess this could best describe the market in general with gold and silver. It is hot, 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 but not only does that describe our gold and silver market, but that also describes our local weather because it is hot, hot, hot. If you live here in South Florida, you certainly know what I'm talking about, and if you're a customer of mine, or you're going to be a customer of mine, or you're, and uh, you're watching this video and you're nearby, Oh my gosh, it is brutally hot out there. So <laughs> my advice, stay indoors and uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, let's take a look and see what's happening in markets today. And I had that little there for a reason because what we have today is a pause. And I love pauses. I love pullbacks too. Not when they just keep happening one after another because that's a down market. <laughs> Not really a bull market when the pullbacks keep happening one after another. Pullbacks are healthy. We had a pullback last week from $29 into that uh, uh, 27 range and then back up to 28 on Friday. It was kind of a roller coaster ride for silver and gold, but those pullbacks are healthy. And so are these pauses that we're having. And that's what we have today. If you take a look, we started approaching that 2050, 2070 range last week. We've kind of pulled back. Uh, I think it went down as low as 2010 on um, Friday. <clears throat> And it's kind of recovered a little bit, and it's kind of pausing right now. And this is great. We're back at these little $25 increments, which I kind of like. Uh, and that's healthy for the market. And the same thing with silver. Uh, although silver did kind of rocket a little bit up to uh, 29 today, uh, we had our pullback on Friday, almost like a $2 pullback close to it when I start taking a look at it. And uh, uh, now it's kind of back up to that $29 mark. Let's take a look here. There's kind of some things going on here that are a little bit reversed, but... Uh, uh, New York spot price closed at $2,024. Let's look at this range, 25 bucks says we've been talking about $25 range. Uh, 20. And I like this, like I said, I like this little pullback. I like the fact that it's sitting at $2,024 um, because this is healthy. This is what a good healthy bull market does. It doesn't just keep going up and up and up and up nonstop. You know, it has pullbacks, it has pauses. And uh, silver, the same thing. Uh, Twenty-eight thirty-six, the low, and uh, I mean that's quite a spread. That's like a dollar spread there. Uh, a twenty-nine thirty-nine, the high. Uh, so silver kind of did rocket a little bit higher and uh, recovered a little bit faster than gold. And there's probably some reasons for that. I'm sure. Well, obviously there's a reason for everything. And it looks like silver closed at twenty-nine twenty-four in New York. Uh, take a look at the world markets here, and it looks like the world markets opened. Or, or, or a little bit uh, lower than the New York close, which is kind of odd. And I'll tell you why. I've noticed a little trend for the last two or three weeks that if uh, the world spot prices close or open a little bit higher, usually that means New York the next day is going to be a little higher. But again, as soon as you start looking at these trends and start trading on them, all of a sudden they change. So again, just a little pattern that I noticed that may not be carried through right now anymore. Uh, so let's take a look at the range in the world markets here, 27.91. A low and 20, God, 27 dollars 28 20 my gosh, it's like, yeah, it's over $2 right there. So quite a big spread in the world market on silver as well. Um, <clears throat> with the silver market a little bit lower and gold market about the same, almost, or actually a little bit higher, perhaps we'll see maybe a little weaker market tomorrow or another pause in uh, silver. We'll see. Maybe it's just kind of waiting before it attacks that 30 level. And I'm glad it didn't attack that 30 level too fast. Uh, but again, I think we're heading for 30 plus here. We'll see what happens. Platinum, uh, same thing, kind of pausing on uh, since Friday, not doing too much. Uh, it did crack that $1,000 level on Friday. I forget which market, whether it was New York or the world markets. Uh, however, it's for all intents and purposes, platinum is at $1,000. And as far as palladium, <clears throat> don't talk about it much because I probably sell uh, one ounce of palladium for every uh, 100,000 ounces of silver and, and for every uh, 10,000 ounces of gold. 
so we sell very little palladium. Don't really read much into it because we don't get asked a lot about it. Uh, but if you want palladium, let me know. I get some good sources on where to get, and I do have good prices. Uh, let's take a look at, the, again, pauses are good. Nice little pause today. Uh, we've not broken into that $30 range yet, and, uh, and gold is still below $2,100, and actually uh, below uh, uh, the 2050 range. So I like this little pause, and I think it's healthy. Um, let's move along to something else here that I've talked about for months now, and but I haven't talked about it in the last week or two, which is the gold to silver ratio. And I found this really cool chart. You know, <clears throat> we were trending uh, like 113. Well, this is 113 to one, but I'm not sure how accurate this chart is, but accurate enough for our purposes. Uh, not too long ago, we were almost 121 to ratio on silver, and I, I strongly believe that's why we've seen silver eh, almost double. Uh, it was just playing catch up with gold all along. Gold's kind of been chugging its way up for quite some time and obviously because it's a uh, hedge against inflation and uh, gold is really, gold is money. Uh, silver, uh, uh, historically the ratio has always been, um, well I think the historic ratio is like 15 to 1, 20 to 1, uh, but for a while now it was uh, 71 and I think we're back to that 60 to 1 ratio I can't like well 80. It shows 80 to one right here at the very end of the chart, uh, but I think we're not 61, but we're close to that 71 ratio. So we're more in line here. You see my cursor going across. We're more in line right now. The ratio is right about here above this line. But let's take a look at the. Uh, this chart says it goes back to 1915. <clears throat> the ratio 1915 to silver and gold was 37 to one, or basically 38 to one, but. Oddly enough, right around when the Federal Reserve in 1919 came to existence, the the uh, ratio was 17 or 18 to 1. And you can see it kind of goes up into a peak of 97. i got to look this up in 1941, but this might make sense during the wartime with, with the gold and silver ratio being uh, uh, so, so high like that. Almost the historic highs that you see over here in 1991 and uh, in 2020, not too long ago. You know, <clears throat> kind of be interesting if I had the time to take a look and see what these particular points that we're looking at at these ratio highs, uh, what correlations and, and what similarities are, or, or what kind of things are happening that created these events. Uh, however, anyways, as you take a look, uh, you can see now that we're back down to about uh, uh, this 80 to 1 or high 70 to 1 ratio. So I think, as you can see here, since the 80s, it's kind of traded in this uh, ratio range right here of what, uh, 70 to 1, 60 to 1 to first, well, okay, so it's a long time. It's been trading in this range, 40 years. It's been trading in this uh, uh, 70, let's say, well, apparently 60 to 120 range or not even uh, 80 range. So this is the average for the last uh, 40 years. And... <clears throat> Again, I think we're getting back down into that average here. Uh, so I think what we're going to see is silver is going to probably go up a little bit faster, uh, but you're not going to see silver rising way faster than gold was uh, once I think it gets into this range right here. But I could be wrong, and a lot of people feel that the real range it should be down here, but I don't know. I mean, we're looking at a 40-year trend of it being, you know, the gold to silver gold to silver ratio being right here. I'm not sure what's going to change that. Uh, but if, if this stays in this ratio, again, I think you're going to see gold and silver start to move in tandem. I don't think you'll see silver moving up as dramatically as it has been. Just my opinion uh, based on what I'm looking at and uh, the trends we've seen. Let's take a look at the Wall Street Journal, what's happening on here. You know, nothing, really nothing in here that uh, would I consider a black swan event that uh, would cause gold to open up much higher tomorrow or silver. Uh, and really everything that has to do with printing more money just means gold and silver is going to go up higher not sure what the stock market's doing but there's one thing absent that i've noticed the last week or two that i've been looking at the wall street journal for these reports for what two or three months now i kind of always look because again i like to look for anything that might be a black swan type event a type event that would create higher gold prices for us tomorrow um you know that we could trade on um, but no less 
The one thing I haven't noticed for the last six months is any mention of the gold and silver bull market. And I got a little antsy about it the other night. Uh, threw a few F-bombs in there. Like, you know, what are they thinking? Why aren't they listing gold and silver on here? And they still aren't. Silver is almost cracking that $30, that $30 mark. Nothing's happening in the stock market. Nothing's happening in any other markets. You'd figure that the Wall Street Journal would mention this. And even if I go over here to, uh, here, markets, take a look. Do you see any mark mention of gold and silver market in here? Uh, especially the rocking great silver market, or the double up of the silver market since March. Uh, not a f mention anywhere in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, I, again, I just think they hate gold and silver. I, I think they hate it. I don't think they want to talk about it for whatever reason. Uh, if you got your opinion, please write them in the comments below. I'd sure like to hear it. And let's take a look. And that's really about it. Um, Anyways, hey, listen, I appreciate you taking a look at all our videos here. Uh, keep watching them. This is Brian Kuzmar from Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. Uh, call me any time at 954-493-8811, or even better, just come in. We're open 10 to 4, Mondays through Fridays. Happy to help you with any of your gold and silver purchases and platinum and palladium if you really want it. So, uh, again, feel free to call us. Come by anytime. And thanks for watching. And let's see what happened tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to see kind of a little pause again tomorrow before we start to see another climb. But it sure be exciting to see it break this $30 market soon uh, on silver. And uh, gold, uh, um, boy, 2100 is the next mark, I think. So, again, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, talk to you tomorrow. Bye. And... Uh, uh, and again, I appreciate you your your time and uh, watching our videos. I got a little tongue tied there. Sorry about that. Usually I just spit it out. So <laughs> my apology. But again, this is Brian Kuzmar from Commercial. It's been a long day too. Sorry.